I think I'll start since it's five minutes after the hour uh, and welcome you all and uh, tell you how anxious I am to be chairing this uh, this meeting. I think if it were in person, it would be a little less daunting, but uh, I'm still working my way through the rules and regulations and bylaws. Um, so I will apologize in advance for things that don't work right. Um, and thank you, thank you Mr. Me. Abercrombie, for stepping up to the plate. <laughs> yeah, let's let's hope I don't strike out. Um, yeah. Um, first of all, is to ask Mark if you will agree to serve as clerk again. Uh, I will continue. Um, I will continue the plea that we would love to get um someone other than white men in the uh officer roles so please feel free to step up but i will keep filling it until someone um steps up thank you i will put on the agenda for next time a request for a clerk and we'll just keep asking until somebody responds um, i guess um i think the first order of business um, is to approve or edit the uh, minutes of the meeting of July 27. Um, you all have received those, and I'm assuming you've read them. If you have any, uh, Koki, you might not have gotten those, but um, those who are here, do you have any additions, corrections to those minutes? If I'm not mistaken, I think those are the ones where I was like 10 minutes late, so I left a few blanks. Um, I can just edit those blanks out if no one wants to add anything that I missed before I joined the meeting. I think hearing, like, I think hearing, item one started ABC, and then item two was DEF, and then I started, you know, I left some... Uh, I left some placeholders for anything that was discussed before I had gotten signed in. Do I hear any items to be added or any corrections to be made? Hearing none, I will entertain a motion to approve the minutes as I'll published. I'll make a motion. Motion. I have a second. second. Been moved and seconded. All in favor, raise your hands. I count all but one, okay? It's unanimous, minutes are approved. Um, could, uh, the minutes, could the minutes be distributed as PDFs so that I can actually read yes. them? Yes, yes, yes. Be great. I will do that. Right. Wayne, I think I know. sent those out uh, twice, one as the uh, mistakenly, and then I sent them out as a PDF to those who requested it. I don't if, think I got the PDF. If you could request it of me, I can send them to you. Okay. And and in the future, I'll know that I have to send them as a PDF. Yeah, that would be great. Thanks. PDF is the um, best format. Um, Wayne, I was reading through the thing, and in an online format, all of the voting is supposed to be by role. In other words, you have to call and ask for each person by name and ask for their votes rather than uh, trying to just wave at you. Uh, so I don't, Christian, I don't know how tightly people are going to be bound to that but i actually took i actually went through and read the thing and that seems that it makes sense also because looking at a field of 12 or 15 faces it's easy for me to mistake a turn of the head or or, or a movement like this as a as a vote huh. um so i i know that that adds time but um you know it, it's it's a procedure it's a procedural thing and and i don't know how strictly everybody wants to stick to procedures but I haven't seen any meetings do that. Um, <laughs> even in the select board, it's like all eyes and we don't do a roll call vote like that. Um, I think with the meeting minutes and things like that, I think raising our hands is probably fine. Um, it's a visual indication instead of taking, you know, more time to go through that. But if we had any major votes, I would say a roll call vote would be good, but I just think you know, maybe we can use our judgment based on level I, of importance. I also don't know if the fact that we can actually see each other and actually raise our hands like this and say, I vote yes or no, 
if that I can see counts. everyone. Right. Oh, okay. okay. So I think I think perhaps that's a, a question for people who are calling in by telephone remotely and don't have mm -hmm. a video feed. Right. So I think if we have people who do that, we should take the time to make sure that we acknowledge and do that. So, okay. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Do uh, we want? Do we want to then have a distinction between raising our hand to say yes or raising our hand to say I have a question? Uh, you would only raise your hand to say yes when you're asked, are you voting yes? Okay. So there wouldn't be any, uh, in a discussion, that's one thing. When we're asking for a vote, particular vote, that's, I think that's pretty distinct. Um, so before we go further, I think it would be important to have people who weren't on our last meeting to at least introduce themselves briefly and say something. Koki, we're, would you like to say something about yourself and your sure. presentation? Thank you. Sure. Um, I'm Koki. I am an elementary school teacher at Hadley uh, Schools. Um, I don't live in Hadley, though, so I believe I'm a non-voting member. Is that is that what it's called? Um, but I just wanted to get involved into something new. Um, I've been with hat with the schools in some form for five years. So I was a student teacher and a paraprofessional. And so, yeah. Good. So you have some deep background. That's very helpful. Very glad you're with us. Thank you. Yes. Bravo. Kayla. Koki, would you just say your last name so we know how it's pronounced? Oh, Mulugeta. Thanks. Mulugeta. Great. Wonderful. Um, You're probably aware, but we do have Amy from uh, the high school. Who yep. Up Hi, Amy. <laughs> right. Who yeah. uh, is acting also as a uh, non-Hadley resident and also as a mentor to uh, Ada. A, I think uh, it's student. yeah. I think it's very valuable to have both of you uh, here. Uh, it's really important to what we're about to do. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would also just comment that at the select board meeting where all the committee members were approved, I would say the select board was really delighted to see representation from the school on the committee, on Good. this committee. So they were, they were pretty psyched about it, it seemed Good. like. We have some members, by the way, uh, to that point, who did not submit their letters. And um, I don't see any of them here, but... Uh, just want to make sure that everybody does uh, submit that letter so that it's formal. And I, I will have some particular questions about our being appointed or sworn in later on, but that's a separate thing, which we don't need to take time with. Uh, Christian, would you be willing to give us um, a brief account of um, what went on at the select board meeting regarding this committee? Yeah, the uh, select board, you know, voted to approve this committee. Um, you know, I think there were three of us that were pretty solid with it, as is a couple members. One member wanted it to be smaller, so like three to five people instead of um, mm -hmm. uh, 12, as we have now. <laughs> um, Actually, it's 17. Uh, 17, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I, but I think that a lot of us were in favor of the committee just being, um, you know, encouraging participation and kind of seeing where we go and that kind of thing. Um, there was some feedback just about how there are concerns over contract negotiations and different stuff and this committee being involved in that. But I think it's more about this committee looking at contracts to make sure they're they're equitable than actually getting involved in contract negotiations. So I think maybe just some clarification mm -hmm. there. And basically they voted to, you know, appoint everyone that was in that document that we put together um, to the committee. And um, I said, we would kind of come to the select board in the future with some goals so that the select board got an idea of what kind of work the committee would want to do. Um, and they were in favor of that with some, you know, um, some desire to, to have a say in those, those goals. And I know Amy was at the meeting. Andrea was there. I don't know if either one of you want to say anything about 
your impressions, but that's about everything I had to say. Okay. Amy. I just wanted to add one thing to what Christian said um, about the concern about the committee being too large. I think one thing that um, might help the select board understand why we are so large is that according to our mission statement or the way we envision this committee running is there would be so many different arenas that we would be helping with. I mean, we're talking about housing and education and, you know, all, all manner of other arenas. It seems like it might behoove us to kind of come up with subcommittees or like specialists for each area to distribute that labor because it's not like we're just doing one thing or accomplishing a small set of goals. We're, really trying to touch upon almost every area of public living in our community. Hmm. Very well put. Yes. Good. Um, any other questions or discussion about that? Thank you for that. I'll, I'll just chime in that, um, I mean, Christian didn't say this specifically, but they did not really approve our mission statement. Hmm. So we do have to I think what will happen is probably once we have a set of goals, um, maybe that will, maybe they will approve the mission statement and the goals right around this at the same meeting. Um, again, want jo Joyce, one of the select uh, board members, board members mm -hmm. um, had concerns again about an aspect of the mission statement where we talked about, um, you know, potentially being a part of, uh, contract negotiations and she just had a strong reaction to that and thought that prior to approving the mission statement with that language in it she'd like to know more about the goals that we were yeah, that's true. going after so mm -hmm. Margaret so Andrea just a point of clarification was that her only objection or were there other aspects of the goals that Thank you. Or the mission statement, I should say. It was just that. Um, I have done that in terms of procedure. Uh, it would be good for us to determine a, a best time and day for our meetings and frequency of meetings. Uh, and I'd like to limit this to about five or 10 minutes if we can, because there are other things I want to get to. But it's important that we decide um, how often we're gonna meet, A, and when we're gonna meet. And I would point out that Mondays in the state of Massachusetts is a frequent holiday. Um, and if we are only meeting on Mondays, we risk meeting, uh, missing those meetings. So, Taro? I looked at the calendars and for the next year, there are only two or three Mondays that fall on holidays. Labor Day is one of them. Easter Monday is possibly one if you celebrate it. And then there's one, maybe one more. Um, so there actually are not very many Mondays that, are, that conflict uh, if, if you look at it that way. So okay. one of the ideas that I, I had was perhaps to put the language this way is to have it on the, on the first Monday of each, each month unless there's a holiday, in which case you can move it to the second Monday of the month. Okay. Mm. I, would, I would second that um, as I'm on the planning board and that's every first and third uh, Tuesday nights. So uh, either I was gonna say go to the second Tuesdays, but the first Mondays with what Taro suggested, um, I fully support. Mm -hmm. Okay. Margaret? Um, I did not uh, do what Taro did. I think that was a great idea that you went and checked to see how many uh, Mondays were involved. Um, but then I would also like to make sure as a Jew that uh, they don't fall on uh, specific Jewish high holy days anyway. So. Margaret, you'll be pleased to know I did look at that. Um, <laughs> if I, I knew it. If I if I know if I remember correctly, Rosh Hashanah is two evenings. The Rosh Hashanah ends on a Sunday this year, but the one of the Mondays I believe does conflict with Yom Kippur. Thank you. 
Yeah, I was just going to add there may be other religious holidays, Muslim, uh, you know, Muslim. So as a committee on diversity, I I hadn't looked in advance, but just that it would be a good thing to check the various religious uh, calendars. Does anybody we could see say a problem the with the next meeting, uh, which would be, I don't have a calendar in front of me, but... but we could say unless that that first Monday falls on a state or religious holiday. How's that? Sure. The next Monday was Labor Day. Yeah, it is Labor Day. <laughs> right. Anybody have a solution to this? So I think for September 2020, it should be the second Monday, the week after Labor Day. Or mm -hmm. October, I believe we are okay. We're in the clear. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, let me double check. Keila? I, I think we're covered if we give ourselves that wiggle room to, to move it when we, when we see one of those conflicts. I have a small concern that I'm not sure how to address. I know that um, Flory, as a business owner, has not been able to be at meetings yet, and today he may be able to be here late. I'm just wondering if we're, um, if we're overlooking the problem of people that that may have business needs that i mean five o'clock is is a little tricky that i wanted to establish the dates before we went to the time uh and the time is another issue uh can we agree on first mondays with that uh proviso uh i'll, I'll take a full vote later but um if we've got the day down uh, how about six o'clock to meet rather than, than five? Does uh, that work for business owners or those otherwise? Go ahead, Jill. Um, I'm one of those business owners and I had to quit early to make this. Um, but six to six thirty or so cuts into dinner. Um, five thirty could work nicely or even five fifteen for me, but I'll also do my best to, to attend whatever we decide. Other and discussion? Can someone reach out to Flory and see what time would make this more inclusive for Flory's, him? Flory's business is painting and uh, each job is different. Mm. He called today because he had expected to be finished at five, but in time to be here at five, but couldn't be. So his business is going to be different each time. Yeah. Uh, Andrea, you had your hand up, I think. I was just volunteering to email Flory because I've been in touch. That's the, that was my hand going up as a, as a volunteer. But I get what you're saying about um, just, yeah, it, it'll depend on the day, I'm sure. And I know for small businesses, Mondays do tend to be a little crazy. So. <laughs> But I think we should just go for what we've already established and we can change it as people begin to um, participate mean, more. And I would say too, if, if we could just schedule the next like three meetings, that would be good. You know, even though we're saying the first Monday, just, just, uh, just schedule mm -hmm. the next three and then we kind of have dates down if that works. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a good idea. Do you mind if I just add one thing? Um, I, I'm not sure if this affects Koki, but sometimes extracurriculars at school or with students often go until after five. So I would agree with Wayne's um, original proposal to have it just a little bit later. Um, I know that that does cut into dinner, but maybe it's a good excuse to have <laughs> takeout or someone else in your house have to make dinner. Would you all, I'm sorry, Margaret, go ahead. You're muted. I can't hear Margaret. Sorry, I thought I did unmute. Uh, I was going to propose that maybe we meet at seven, then seven to eight. Uh, that would give maybe someone like, uh, um, uh, you know, other business owners that time to have dinner and then, um, you know, join the meeting. Just throwing that out. 
ideas? Yes, Taro? Um, this is for my personal interest. Do Fridays work? There's a lot of head shaking going on. Yeah. Nobody wants to work on a Friday evening. Okay. Friday's often escape night. Yeah, I, I realize that, but it's if once the pandemic ends, I'm unavailable Monday through Thursday nights, mm. which is why which is why I asked. So once, but that's just one person, so I wanted to get a mm. feel. Thank you. Well, if we schedule the next three meetings and then things change, we can then mm -hmm. move to change the meeting time. And, so, and one Friday a month might not be so painful. Yeah. Um, uh, how does 515 go for a time to meet? Uh, I'd like to see a show of hands, please. Raise your hand and keep them up so I can make sure. So we agree 515 will be the time and the dates. Uh, Mark, if you'll just put in the minutes the next three meetings as they come on the first Mondays or whatever of the month. Okay. That would be September 14th, yeah. which would be the week after Labor Day. It would be October 5th. My calendar is showing that it's day three of Sukkot, which I, I actually don't know if that's a high holiday. I don't believe it is. It's okay. We can we can meet then, uh, Tara. Okay. It, it, it actually, I was wrong. It misses this. This is the week after Yom Kippur, so I apologize for that. Um, and then November would be November 2nd. So I'm, I'm sorry. I was typing. It, it is October 5th or is it the 12th? October 5th. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, yep. And I have a show of hands for meeting uh, at 515 on those three dates. Yes. Motion passes. Those are the meetings and you'll see them in the, in the minutes. Um, great. I'm thinking, uh, I just want to introduce this thought that as we go on, uh, either we're going to have to have very active subcommittees or extend the amount of time for each meeting because we're getting into some pretty heavy stuff. And if we spend this much time debating or discussing the time of our meeting, you know when it gets to be a thorny issue, it's going to take longer. Uh, so down the road, I think we're going to need to decide based on the first few meetings we have mm -hmm. whether we'll need more time. Mm -hmm. for these meetings and whether that's possible. Um, Sarah I, has a question. Sarah has a question. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I certainly envision that there would be subcommittees given this. That's part of why we want a big group is that three or two or three or four people will go, yeah, I really want to work on that issue or that other one or something like that. And that if the whole committee is only meeting once a month, then those subcommittees can be meeting in the weeks in between and getting that work moved forward. Right. And, right. and they can just each decide the best time for their meeting. So it doesn't have to be any of that. Good. Um, I proposed in the minutes that uh, we limit our discussions, our individual contributions to discussions to three minutes. It's it's sort of arbitrary because we have such a large committee and I want to make sure people have the the, uh, the chance to contribute. Uh, if that's okay with everyone, then uh, I need someone to serve as a gentle timer to help us keep to that schedule. First of all, does that make sense to people or do you want to have no limits at all? Mark? Oh, I would, I would defer to Margaret. Okay. I, I think it does make sense um, to, to limit. And I think d depending upon, I mean, what, how you had worded it was, that's your first go around, basically. And if, there are, right. if, if there's a need for, other discuss, you know, for further discussion on it, then we can still have it. But we still need to limit no. each speaker each time to three minutes. So I think the way it was written is, is fine. Okay. I also want to make sure that no one speaks a second time before everyone has had the opportunity 
to speak to a discussion, to speak mm -hmm. in a discussion. Um, um, and I'm. So, Wayne, you know, can I just ask, do we need to vote on that? Is that something that's like a. Or, or do we just say, okay, so we, we accept that? I take your agreement, I take that as being a general agreement, and I don't mm -hmm. think we need to vote on that uh, unless somebody thinks we do. Mm -hmm. That's an agreement among us. Um, we will need a timer when we get into discussion. So, um, uh, Deborah. I'll be glad to do that, Wayne. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, um, Wayne, yes. Um, just going back to a point you made earlier, when we have, and I just wanted Christian to speak to this with his experience, when we have subcommittee meetings, if they're more often, does the open meeting law apply to those as well? I think we can get into that when we actually assign okay. the subcommittee, uh, subcommittees or we have the need to do so. Okay. Uh, then that will be a procedural question that we okay. certainly have to line up with. Um, so I put out these items for discussion and, and if you don't mind for this particular meeting, I'll follow, um, I'll follow the order that I have here. Um, I have one item that Kayla suggested that I didn't include that I sent out an email about later this on, which would be second. So if there's no objections, may we discuss the present situation with diversity, inclusion, and equity in Hadley as each of you understand it and how that might best be determined if you don't have a clear idea of it. Um, so who would like to go first? What's the situation? Uh, maybe I'll start with Amy. Thank you. You're on mute. Oh, there you are. I know, I gotcha. I'll be brave. Um, so I guess what I have to report would be mostly what I have heard from young people who live in Hadley, um, which maybe doesn't make me that brave because I'm just taking other people's words. But um, it seems like many students have repeatedly brought up concerns over the years in this uh, the schools, I'm not sure about the elementary school, but I know at the high school level um, that there have been incidents of hostility um, and that they feel that Hadley does not have the best reputation in the Valley for being inclusive uh, to people of different ethnicities, religious backgrounds, etc. cetera. Um, I know that students, um, students of color in particular have come to me um, as the advisor to diversity club and have expressed sincere concerns about the way they feel that they've been treated in the school or the community. And we have lost quite a few students um, of different backgrounds to other districts because they feel that they are not as welcome as they would like to be. So I think that's one of the main issues with the schools that I would like to see addressed. Um, and again, I think that ripples out into the greater community. Thank you. Next. Um, not hearing anything, I'm going to suggest that we take up and I will propose this in the next uh, as an item in the next meeting for us to um, find ways to invite the community to speak to us to communicate to us uh, in one fashion or another their experiences. And that could be rather complicated. We, we will need to find ways to get out the word that we are a committee and that the invitation is sincere. And so I'd like you to think about that. I'll propose it for the next meeting. Um, I have a suggestion for that, Wayne. I think it's a good suggestion. There's a couple of um, other parallel efforts going on in Hadley. Um, one that Humera on the school committee is um, uh, leading. And um, I, I know that we could invite 
um, some of the discussions from that group to inform our uh, understanding of people's perception of diversity, equity, and inclusion in Hadley. So, uh, and I know that they really would like to work together with our committee as well. I'd like to suggest that we make this an agenda item for our next meeting, that we contribute ideas just like this about how we can get the word out that we want to hear from people like that and things that we can actively ask specific people or committees about. Uh, Devorah, you had your hand up. Just that I um, agreed with what Andrea was saying based on the article that I read in the Gazette from the, about the school committee's recent vote. I think it was a vote. It, it was a statement of diversity and anti-racism. That was a very strong statement. So I was very impressed by that. Any other thoughts about this? I just have a couple couple things is um, the HR manager, the new person uh, reached out to me and um, she mentioned having a resolution similar to the school committee's resolution that would come out by the select board and this committee would be a great place to have that resolution come from, um, something similar. And then also she emailed me about Hadley entertaining the idea of Indigenous Peoples Day as um, in lieu of Columbus Day, if we wanted to do anything along those lines. Um, yeah. So that's just like two things from the HR manager. It might even be good to invite her to one of our meetings to talk to her about where we could be involved um, with the town and what we could do there. Uh, and then also uh, the police chief would, would be more than willing to talk to this uh, committee and bring up any kind of issues or topics uh, we wanted to talk about. So um, just a few ideas of things we could we could focus on. I invite you to send to me privately. We are not allowed to do, to email everyone and discuss things on email. All of our discussions as a committee need to be public and in this format. But you can communicate to me uh, specifics of what you would like us to discuss, agenda items, suggestions for me, um, and I can correspond with you. We can talk with each other, but we cannot discuss things as a whole. Mm -hmm. So I invite you to think about this and propose specific things, and I will pull them together and we can have a discussion about this item, which I think is really important in the next, in the next meeting. Um, yes, Deborah. Yeah, I also wanted to get back to Amy and your comments based on what you're hearing at school and what students say when they come to you. Is there any other feedback that you can give us that might be even more specific? I mean, whether that's now or in the future, more detailed, more specific information about what students are feeling when they talk about a hostile environment, for example. Yeah, definitely. I think maybe probably today is not the day to get into the weeds with that, but I would be happy to share that. Um, we also have data on our uh, district as well mm. uh, that is broken down into a lot of groups that might be helpful for us to peruse as well. And the school itself, the administration is working really hard to offer programming to try to address some of these issues. So working in tandem with them, I think would be um, really helpful moving forward too. Thank you. Sarah, you had your hand up while ago. Yeah, I was just the the whole Columbus Day Indigenous Peoples Day idea uh, sounds great. And is it too close to October? We only have one more meeting between now and then. Would it be too rushed if we took that up at the next meeting? Or are we talking about something for next year? I don't I would ask that you propose it for us to discuss in the next meeting. Okay, then let's discuss that next meeting and see if we can get anywhere with it for this year. Thank you. Um, yes, Margaret. Um, Amy, where can one uh, have a look at that data that you referred to? Mm. 
Um, there is data from the state I know that is provided by, I believe, DESE, the Department of Education, and then um, for the state of Massachusetts. So you can look at stats for each district in terms of things like how successful students are if they are students with disabilities versus students without disabilities, how successful students are based on race, um, disciplinary action, and the percentage that's taken against, let's say, students who identify as Caucasian versus students who identify as uh, Latinx or uh, Black. So I think sometimes, I know the school has done a lot of work reviewing that data and trying to address some of those issues. So that could be a good place to start from a place of information and fact. Would you mind sharing that site with me so that everyone could could mm -hmm. access it and I will share it with the committee? Um, yeah. Does that have actual data on Hadley? Yeah, so it's all public ed, um, information about every district, <clears throat> pretty much everywhere. Cause you know how schools are, it's all public information. So I can easily share that with you guys. Pat? I was to have another data question. If I recall, Joanne, you shared some data in our first meeting with regard to the it diversity did. of the town. Yep, I brought it with me. Because <laughs> I, I really appreciate the data discussion, and I think just looking at, at various, various data sets would be really helpful. I'll admit that I don't know too much about Hadley. I'm a relative newcomer to the town, so I think I'll learn from all of you, and then I would like to look at some some actual stats if they're available. Do you have those addresses where you can, I, you can find it online when you go uh, to a certain, and I looked it up, but I didn't copy the address down. Joanne, do you have that? I, yeah, I have those stats, but I also have the website. So that, uh, Wayne, I can email that you that website. If you okay. would, then I will share it with everyone because yeah, it has, sure. it has, all that information about the town, and then Amy will send us the connection to the school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have of, of um, six thousand population in Hadley. Eight percent, or somewhere around eight percent, is African American, and much less for other groups. But all that is available online, and Joanne will share that with us. Mm -hmm. is that okay, Pat? That's great. I have a, one other question with regard to that. Does the town also keep statistics about employees and those diversity statistics? Yeah, it does. I can say that. Okay. Oh. Is that on the website that Amy would I can see? find it. Yeah, I can find it. That would be really helpful. Thank you. Share it with me, Koki, and I will share it with everybody else. Um, yeah. Um, May I move on? I think we have a lot of information coming and this is really helpful to have everybody on the same page as to what the figures are. Um, Kayla suggested as an item to discuss, how do we encourage and identify um, our neighbors, uh, BIPOC neighbors to be part of the committee? Um, I know that we've had discussion earlier about the size of the committee, but I think the makeup of the committee is important for us to consider. Uh, so that question is on the table for you to discuss. Anybody? I was glad to hear the question because it kind of followed up on what we were saying at the last, at one of our last meetings that we have a lot of uh privileged uh with the white men here so it would be nice to uh have us be better informed and share and inclusive in um our perspectives other thoughts Tavor? I know that one group that I wanted to reach out to was our local mosque, and I have been meaning to talk with Naz, Naz Muhammad, um, who is a leader at the mosque, about, uh, about, this, about this issue and whether there are some folks that she knows of in the Muslim community who might uh, want to be part of our effort. 
Amy? Uh, one person I know who has been extremely active in supporting the Diversity Club and helping to inform us, she even gave a seminar on uh, Islam, is Nancy Yaman, uh, who is a Hadley resident and um, has done a lot of work in education. So I could also potentially check in with her. I know she might be busy, but um, she's very active in um, spreading information and, and awareness and also is interested in issues of diversity. Would you do that and, and copy me on that so I can have her uh, connection? I asked a friend of mine who, uh, who has been active in the NAACP local chapter uh, in Amherst. And um, he informed me that since 2018, that chapter has not been active. Um, I'm sorry to say, but I'll keep following up on that. I was gonna ask if any one of them could speak to us. Kayla? I would just say thank you to those of you that are reaching out to people and, um, maybe with the understanding that maybe those people are too busy, but maybe they know somebody who, who might be interested in engaging with us. This is great. Uh, and I think it's a big task, but I think that's one of the ground, that's part of the groundwork that we need to lay to just inform ourselves not only about statistics, but from people who are in the community or close to the community who can speak to us personally about uh, facts and things on the ground. Uh, along with that idea, I was gonna propose that we find ways to invite individuals in the Hadley community to share their experiences and hopes with us. Um, and I, I'd like in the next meeting, before the next meeting, if you would think about ways that we can do that so that we can schedule ourselves to hear from people knowing that we have a relatively small amount of time to deliberate, but realizing that if we could ask these people to speak to us five or 10 minutes, um, whatever you think is appropriate. I don't want to insult anybody by giving them only a few minutes to speak, but uh, the police chief, um, uh, the, the school superintendent, uh, principals, um, other people, and other ways to notify non-officials, but people who, personal, who have a personal stake in this, who don't have titles, but to make it possible for them to contribute to what we're trying to find out. Um, how to get that word out is a little problematic. Uh, how can we use public media? How can we, um, is there an article that we could write for the Gazette that lets them know about our work and about our interest in hearing from people and learning that we're trying to understand and uh, that's one possibility. Uh, radio, uh, other ways to get in touch. So I would like to make that an item for next meeting. If you would think about that and we can come up with some specific ways of contacting people. I would specifically like to hear uh, from our members, Amy and Koki, about the situations where they are and um, to give them time to speak to us particularly about their particular situation. And any others of you who have particular ideas that you want to share with the community, with, with this committee uh, that is informative and gives us, in, gives us knowledge about what really is happening on the ground. Uh, I think there's a danger in making assumptions without grounding it in facts. And there's a power in hearing from people who are in those situations. Um, Tara. Yes, Tara. Would, it be, would it be appropriate to use the, the advertising and communication channels that the park and recreation or the library has to get the word out for, uh, for what we're talking about here? Since, since park and rec and the library already have pretty good mechanisms for getting 
information out to people in the community? Is that something that we can lean on or is that an inappropriate use of their resources? Similarly, yeah. could we go through the schools, but I think the schools have enough to do on, on their own. And that includes yeah. both the, the two schools that are represented here and also the Chinese Immersion School located in Hadley. I don't know the answer to that, but if you would propose that in specific, I think we can ask the question of a lot of different people and have, yeah. have an answer. Yeah. So, so I, I'll, I would say like, if we have to propose a formula, I would say to, I propose to look into the appropriateness yeah. and the usability of uh, <clears throat> using the Hadley Park and Rec and the public library in order to uh, get get the word out for, for our work and to help recruit people to participate. Okay. Can you send that to me in writing, please? Yes. Carl? Thank you. Any other thoughts on this subject, Kayla? I'll volunteer to reach out to those organizations. Thank you. I was also thinking I liked your idea of um, inviting speakers. What if we thought about if we debated it at a future point, setting aside, say, 15 minutes into every meeting, we would have an invited speaker that could have a slot from anywhere from five to 15 minutes to speak to us. And that could maybe set a theme or, you know, it would give us time to get some business done and then have them speak and they wouldn't have to listen to our whole meeting and then that might inform the end of our meeting. I would, I would uh, ask you to submit to me people you would like to hear from and I'll compile that list and then we can order it and try to arrange and schedule it. Um, Margaret, you had your hand up. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I, I think that's a great idea to invite speakers. My, um, my only hesitation, because we haven't done this before, is there's a pot, I, 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 that if we invite someone to speak for five or 15 minutes, I also want to make sure that we are prepared to, if we need to, ask a bunch of questions, and that might go well beyond the 15 minutes. So I'm not sure how that would, um, how we would configure that, because presumably if the superintendent of school came to talk to us, we might spend the whole time talking with him or asking questions of her or whoever the superintendent is. This is, this is my big concern when I thought about inviting people um, in conjunction with, hi, Flory, we'll say hi. hi. Uh, uh, in conjunction with also with the issue of how little time we have uh, to make sure that we don't, um, to make sure that we get to the things we need to get to, to plan for our future, to uh, structure what our work, uh, we could well, as you say, take up a whole meeting with one, with the superintendent of schools. Uh, and I think in the initial stages, uh, it would it would not be good to do so. So I solicit your ideas about how we can do this expeditiously so that we don't use up, uh, so that we have time to do other work of the committee, which again, I see as planning and establishing what we're going to do and our goals and our, uh, the things that we really want to accomplish, um, at least in the first three or four meetings, I think it's important to establish a plan. That's sort of rambling, uh, but uh, I'm totally in agreement with having these people here. I'm just uh, concerned that we have time for the committee to do its long-term planning and work. Um, Anyone else? Should we re um, should should we summarize an earlier discussion for Flory when we were talking about when to meet, or just let him read that in the minutes? Would, second you, now? would you do that? Well, first of all, let me welcome Flory, and we all say hi to Flory. Uh, all right, um, and. Um, invite you to say two or three things about yourself 
uh, to introduce yourself to us. Yeah, okay. Yes. Yeah, good evening, everybody. Uh, as you know, my name is Flori Etende. I live here in Adelie on Meadowbrook Drive. And I've been I've been living here in Adelie since 2006, like uh, 14 years. So coming coming from, I'm originally from uh, Congo, Democratic Republic of Congo, and uh, moved. I moved to USA back in, in 1996, and I was living in North Tempton, East Tempton, tried to go around Westfield and uh, Florence for five years, and I went to Ohio for like a year, from 2005 to 2006 to Ohio at Cincinnati. I, I didn't like over there, and I came back to Massachusetts, and. Uh, from Ohio straight to Hadley since 2006, and uh, I got my house in 2009, so it's like 11 years. So we're I'm happy to have you. Here. Thank you. Good. Uh, Mark, would you do? Uh, we have four minutes left, so would you uh, do a summary for Flory uh, of the important stuff? And he'll see the rest in the minutes. Yeah, we were talking about uh, when to meet. Um, future meetings will be on the first Mondays of each month, unless that is a state, federal, or religious holiday. Mm -hmm. And we settled on 515 to 615, recognizing that that may not fit everyone. Um, we were... That was based on the input that we had, but we did mention that your jobs are not set hours. They, you know, it, it, it takes the time it takes. Um, so we want to be inclusive and don't know if, if uh, you know, we talked about five to six being too early for people that work nine to five jobs. So then we talked about six to seven. And there was some concern that cuts into meals. Um, and then there was 5.30 to 6.30. And the last place we left it was 5.15 to 6.15. I don't know if any of that, if you have any opinions on that. Uh, really, it doesn't matter for me. 5 to 6 or 6.15 to 7.50 or whatever is good for me. Today, it's kind of a special because I was in Springfield while washing the house. So... I came back home too wet, so I have to go take a shower quickly before I can join the group. And uh, downloading the computer takes time too. That's why I'm, I was kind of late. I'm sorry. Yeah. It doesn't matter for me. Five or six is fine. So okay. every every month on Monday, the first month of the month, so I have to do my best to be yeah in my house uh, at that time. Those dates will be published in the minutes, so we'll have yeah. specific dates. And, and our next meeting, our next meeting will be September fourteenth because that first Monday is a holiday. So, oh, okay. And I think we agreed that we were going to start at five fifteen. Five fifteen okay. to six fifteen. Yep. Yeah. Six fifteen. And then we talked about the fact that we may need more than, than an hour, and that's something we'll talk about at the next meeting. Okay. Or one of the next meetings. So we have two minutes left, and I want to ask uh, quickly if anyone has anything to add to this. We have a lot coming up in the minutes, which we're going to, which is going to set our agenda for the next meeting. And uh, when you read those, I will ask that I'll send out something to you requesting agenda items after you've had a chance to discuss those, and I will bring those and. Um, try to find some way that we can order them uh, collectively. I, I, don't, I don't really like the idea of my deciding what is gonna come first and second and third. Uh, I would like that, but if it gets to be too time consuming for us to vote on the order of the meeting, then we might have to, we might, I might have to do that. So um, send me your agenda items. And um, and I will send something out in well before the meeting, um, 
where we can go back and forth individually about those items. And again, I'll get things out as timely as I can. This is all new to me and I'm trying to digest the town bylaws so that we can be legal and, um, and we're doing everything by the book and everything openly. Um, I, I have no doubts that I'm gonna make some mistakes and um, feel free to guide me when I make those mistakes or uh, to volunteer to do some things for us. Um, we will be, I'm almost certain, coming up with some subcommittees to deal with the many things that we're gonna have to deal with uh, to make it forward for us to move forward without having to debate everything in the meetings. I think that's the, so if you have certain interests, feel free to share those with me. And if you have ideas for subcommittees, I've heard several coming here, share those with me. I will do my best to digest those, send them out to you so we can, um, so that we can decide on those. Um, so, yes, Joanne. Yeah, I just want to say, Wayne, thank you. You're doing a fine job, number <laughs> one. Um, number two, um, and maybe Christian can answer this, but I, my understanding is that the notice of a meeting has to go out two days before the meeting, correct? At least. Okay. And it's so farther in advance next time, but we if, have all those dates. Yeah. And I, that was fine. I just noticed that when I got your email, Wayne, which was great, and you wanted an answer by Friday noon, I'm working. I, it's not enough time for me. I couldn't. Uh, it, I understand, it Joanne. There okay. was no way to avoid that because it's okay. the committee was not approved until Wednesday night. Oh, okay. So in other words, you'll probably do it a little bit sooner. Okay. It was it just my request. Thank you. A lot sooner. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Great. Yes. Thank you. Anything else for the good of the company before we adjourn? Mark? Wayne, I, I have one question. I've been numbering our meetings from our first meetings. Should I renumber them starting now that we're an official <laughs> committee or just keep going with our... Okay. Christian, you're the one to answer that, I think. And... One other note, I was typing, and I'm not a good typist, so I'm looking down. I looked up, and I saw Amy put her baby up, and it looked like the baby was climbing the book, and she turned away. And I was like, oh, my God. I didn't see her partner behind her. I was like, ah! <laughs> the flying baby. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. Anything else for the good of the company before we adjourn? Uh, and Chris, for our meetings, or I would say just stick with the date because you know, okay, sooner or later we'll lose track. I mean, the yeah. first 10 might be easy, but once it gets past that, we'll be like, What number are we on again? <laughs> so, can you also, I like that. Can you also send us something about the official swearing in? I looked through the bylaws and I don't see I see that we have to be sworn in but I don't see anything about how um, so I'm yeah assuming. that's going to be tricky because town hall is officially closed yep um, and you would have to go normally you just go to the town clerk's office and get sworn in um, give us so a ruling on that uh, so we can all do it individually. Yeah, so I don't know exactly how that's working these days. So I can I can ask the town clerk what what her policy is right now, and, and we can see. Could we do it I in a will... lot outside the town hall? <laughs> yeah, you might just have to schedule with her. So let me let me ask her just so there's not 17 people asking her, and then I can email you guys with her verdict for getting sworn in. That's okay. That's fine to share that kind of information. And I will be in touch with the people who didn't join us this time and, and uh, urge them to be back with us. And there are some people who didn't send their bio in to be officially whatever it is. So uh, again, I will be in touch with them. Thank you all. And um, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second.
Uh, second, all in favor, raise your hands so I can count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, we're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.